some of the uh, primary things on this plane. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, show you how I'm mounting the wing. I'm using the cheap and dirty method today, nothing fancy like I usually do. But it will suffice for the uh, test flights. Uh, this is like, what, the third prototype, so I really am not getting too uh, fussy about this one. Just want to see if it actually still flies. Um, so, uh, what I've done is basically, if I get the wing in, into place, I just marked off where the wing tube was, and I literally just drilled down into it, through the wing tube, and put a thread on the opposite side. So this bolt just literally goes in like this. Nothing big deal. I'm not going to bother putting it all the way in. But it just goes through the wing tube. So it's underneath. You don't see it. And uh, it's good enough for what I want for this model. Normally, I would have wanted to put it on the uh, inside where it mounts on the back side here, but I'd have to open the gear door to get it in and all that kind of stuff. And there's no room for me to get a, a nut behind it or any kind of mounting system. So I, I chose to just go this way. So uh, it works, it'll hold the wing on and that's the uh, main thing. Uh, this is the, uh, you can see it's just a two wire positive and negative connector. That's because I have a uh, six channel receiver in each wing. And uh, that's the great thing about ground. You can have up to four receivers. So we're gonna now get on back to the tail and mount the flying stabs. For the flying stabs, I use four of these flange type bearings. Uh, this isn't, the picture isn't exactly the uh, size that I use, but uh, it's a good representation. This picture shows the custom designed stab cradle that I uh, made. Uh, did this in Fusion 360. It incorporates four of these flange bearings and uh, one, two, three, and four. Each stab gets one of these blue uh, thrust bearings. They have little uh, roller balls in them. And without them, uh, the stab, because of the angle of the stab to the fuselage, the stabs would jam. So this is kind of like a frictionless spacer. So we're now going to try and assemble this. So first I put this uh, carbon tube inside this guy here. And that's to spread the load. That'll go into the next pin over here. And that's to help spread the load. And then we have to sneak it through. So I have to put a washer on. I know this is a pain in the ass, but anyhow. So I have to then put this washer on. So there. Then I have to put this guy in. So that would be that way. So this guy goes in. And inevitably, it will all fall off on me. <laughs> it always does so it takes a couple of attempts see already I forgot that I need to put a spacer in so I've got that now I need to somehow sneak this spacer in without it falling out so this is this guy it's very uh, difficult to get these lined up because of the the way they made these clamps, if they'd have put the bloody screws the other way around, it'd be uh, pretty much a piece of cake. So anyway, I'm just going to sort of snug them a little bit, then I'll check them, and then uh, we'll see. And then we'll see how things are coming out. So I've got a mark there, pretty much, from before. That's neutral. So this one needs to come this way just a bit. It's a pretty much rough and ready way of uh, lining these up. But let's see. Only the way I can do it. So I put one mark on one side, one on the other. And try and get those in about the same position. So that's the stabs uh, installed and uh, ready for flight. Just need to adjust with the radio and uh, all will be good. 
uh, give us a thumbs up if you like these uh, videos uh, you notice these are really short now like around five six minutes that's because most of you only watch my movies for about two minutes so there's no point going to all the effort to make a 20 minute movie anyhow like subscribe ring that bell get a notification and tell all your friends thanks for watching coming next is a uh, broken rudder how to fix the hinges